Touching you began with a handsome man named Du Jin Wu visiting a men's clothing store to buy some clothes. When he arrived there, a worker there greeted him warmly. Jin Wu looked around the store to find the clothes that he was looking for. While he was looking around, he saw the clothes that the mannequin wore and stopped in front of that mannequin. The worker thought that Jin Wu was interested in those clothes. She tried to convince Jin Wu that those clothes were top selling. Jin Wu asked her how much did it cost and the worker said that it costed 39,000 won. Jin Wu thought that it was too expensive. So he changed his mind to buy those clothes and tried to leave the store. But the worker stopped him right away and said that she would give him a special offer since he was good looking. She said that Jin Wu could pay 35,000 won for the clothes. She also said that the clothes that the mannequin wore was the last stock that they had. Suddenly, Jin Wu touched that woman's hair and tucked it behind her ear. He then closed his eyes as if he was trying to feel something. After that, he smirked and told that worker that a beautiful woman like her shouldn't have lied. He knew that the store still had another stock of those clothes. If he bought the one that the mannequin wore, the worker could display another one. Jin Wu then asked that worker to sell those clothes for 30,000 won to him. That worker was surprised when she heard that. She wondered how Jin Wu knew that she was lying to him. But since Jin Wu had found out about the truth, she finally agreed to sell the clothes that Jin Wu wanted for 30,000 won to him. Jin Wu was happy because of that. Before he left the store, he told that worker to be careful when she was looking for the clothes in the storeroom. He said that that worker could injure her hand if she was not being careful. That worker was surprised and confused when she heard that. She didn't understand what Jin Wu meant by saying that. After Jin Wu left the store, that worker returned to the storeroom. While she was looking for some clothes there, she suddenly injured her hand. She suddenly remembered about what Jin Wu said to her earlier and wondered who that man might be. While Jin Wu was walking down the street, some women couldn't stop staring at him because of his handsome face. Apparently, Jin Wu had a special ability. Every time he touched someone, he could see into their future. That was why he knew that the worker of the clothing store was going to hurt her hand when she was looking for clothes in the storeroom. Later, Jin Wu changed his clothes and continued to walk down the street while eating a lollipop. He revealed that he could see into someone's future when he did physical contact with them. Suddenly, he stopped in front of a women's clothing store and stared at a white dress that a mannequin wore in that store. He thought that that white dress was so beautiful that he believed that it was impossible to find a woman who would look good in that dress. But soon after he had that thought, a woman suddenly put on that dress. Jin Wu thought that that woman was so beautiful that he couldn't stop staring at her. But when that woman looked at him, Jin Wu quickly looked away from her and continued to walk down the street. Jin Wu then went to a coffee shop. While he was hanging out at that coffee shop, he looked at the camera and said that he was trying his best to make use of his ability. He knew that the audience might wonder about what he had just said. He then revealed that he used his ability to earn money by helping his friend, Oh Young Dao, to run a physic reading business. In the evening, Jin Wu went to Young Dao's coffee shop. When he arrived there, Young Dao said that a customer had been waiting for him. Jin Wu then approached that woman and greeted her. He took a seat in front of that woman and asked her if he could do anything to help her. At first, that woman doubted that Jin Wu could help her because of how he looked, but she finally decided to tell her problem to Jin Wu. She said that she was confused about what to do, she couldn't decide if she should leave or stay at her workplace. Jin Wu asked that woman to hold his hand. That woman did what he asked her and Jin Wu began to see into her future. In his vision, Jin Wu found out that that woman's boss was a pervert. He saw him sexually harassing that woman at the workplace. But he also saw him getting arrested by the police later. After Jin Wu finished seeing into that woman's future, he suggested that woman to stay at her workplace. However, he didn't tell that woman about what he saw in his vision. That woman was not sure if she should listen to Jin Wu's suggestion or not, but she still thanked him for helping her. After that, Jin Wu told Young Dao that he was thirsty and asked him to give him a drink. Young Dao offered him a cup of coffee that he had prepared on the table, but Jin Wu refused to drink that coffee. He asked Young Dao if he forgot that he didn't drink coffee. Just right after he said that, a worker approached him and offered him a cup of milk. Jin Wu thanked her and smelled that milk before he drank it. He asked Young Dao if that milk was still fresh and not spoiled. Young Dao was annoyed by his question. He said that he had just purchased that milk in the morning. While Jin Wu was drinking his milk, two women suddenly came to that store. Jin Wu was surprised when he found out that one of those women was a beautiful woman who we saw in the women's clothing store earlier. Turned out, Young Dal knew that woman. He told Jin Wu that he called that woman Angel. Jin Wu asked him what he meant by that because everybody knew that that woman was a human. Young Dal said that he had a crush on that woman. He admitted that he had been stalking that woman that he knew about what that woman did, where she worked, and where she lived. He explained that he called that woman Angel because she always smiled when she was serving the customers at her workplace. That woman was also kind-hearted because she always helped those in need around her, just like an angel. 
Young Dal said that it was hard for them to find a woman like her nowadays. Xian Wu seemed uninterested in what Young Dal said about that woman. Instead of responding to his story, he told him to quickly serve their customers as they had been waiting on their table. Young Dal then walked toward that woman's table and asked her and her friend about what they wanted to order. Turned out that woman and her friend wanted to use his physic reading service. Young Dao returned to Jun Wu and told him that that woman and her friend wanted to use their physic reading service. He also said that he was very happy because that woman smiled at him. Jin Wu shook his head when he heard that. He then approached that woman and her friend. Just like his previous customer, that woman and her friend also doubted that Jin Wu could help them because he looked nothing like a fortune teller. Turned out that woman, whom Young Dao called Angel, was the one who wanted to use his physic service. That woman was named Jin He Young. He Young wanted to consult about her love life. She said that she had been dating a man for a year, but her boyfriend hadn't proposed to her until this day. She said that she was worried about her relationship because her boyfriend was going to move abroad soon. Jin Wu asked her to hold his hand and began to see into her future. In his vision, he saw something horrible happen to He Young. He saw He Young falling down the stairs and injuring her head. He was horrified to see that incident that he suddenly let go of He Young's hand. He told He Young about the incident that happened to her that he saw in his vision. He Young was surprised when she heard that. Jin Wu was worried about her and suggested her to stay away from a high place. He Young's friend Quan Ai Suk was mad at Jin Wu because of what he said about He Young. She called Jin Wu a liar and asked He Young to leave that place with her. While He Young was walking away, she suddenly returned to Jin Wu and gave him some money. She thanked Jin Wu for trying to help her and cheered him up. She knew that it was hard to find jobs these days. After she said that, she left that place. Jin Wu was speechless when he saw that, he couldn't say anything to her. After He Young and Mai Suk left that place, Yum Dal approached Jin Wu and asked him why he was being quiet. Jin Wu answered death. Yum Dal was confused when he heard that. He asked him about what he meant by that and what he saw in his vision. Jin Wu explained that He Young was going to die soon. The next day, Jin Wu went to a cosmetic store to work part-time there. He looked different from how he looked before. This time, he was wearing buttoned-up shirt and glasses. His hairstyle was also different from his usual hairstyle. His new appearance made him look like a nerd. Turned out the cosmetic store was the place where He Young and Mai Suk were working at. As a new employee, Jin Wu introduced himself to He Young, Mai Suk, and other employees there. He Young was surprised when she saw Jin Wu there. She thought that she had seen Jin Wu before, but Mai Suk said that a man like Jin Wu could be found everywhere. Wang Xin Yang, their boss, read Jin Wu's biodata that was written in Jin Wu's curriculum vita. But turned out, Jin Wu had faked his curriculum vita. In his fake curriculum vitae, he wrote that he was a student of Sewell National University who was taking a break from college for a while. The next scene revealed why Jin Wu decided to disguise himself as a nerd and work part-time at that cosmetic store. In the night when He Young and Mai Suk visited Young Dao's coffee shop, Jin Wu told Young Dao about the incident that happened to He Young that he saw in his vision. But even though he saw He Young falling down the stairs, he couldn't see the whole incident. He didn't know where or when the incident took place. Young Dal called him heartless because he didn't do anything to help He Young, even though he knew that He Young was doomed to a horrible fate. Jin Wu was mad when he heard that. He said that he would help He Young if he knew how to do it. Young Dal suggested him to touch He Young again so that he could see into her future and see that incident. Jin Wu took a deep breath and told him that it was not easy for him to touch a woman. He thought that there was no way that He Young would let him touch her, especially to consider that He Young and Mai Suk had called him a liar. But Young Dal refused to accept his answer. He said that he would give his drone to Jin Wu if Jin Wu saved his angel. After Jin Wu thought about it carefully, he finally agreed to help He Young. But he said that he didn't know how to get close to He Young without being perceived as a freak. Young Dal said that he had an idea, and that idea was that Jin Wu working part-time at the cosmetic store where He Young was working at. At the cosmetic store, Jin Wu was standing in front of the cosmetic store and giving free samples of the cosmetic products to people who walked past the cosmetic store. He didn't like what he was doing, but he kept smiling and doing his job. To make him suffer more, he needed to mop the floor by himself. While he was mopping the floor, he noticed that there was a man in black clothes. That man looked suspicious because it looked like he was watching the situation in that place. After that man saw Jin Wu watching him, he suddenly left that store. After Jin Wu finished mopping the floor, he approached He Young who was working as a cashier. He was speechless when He Young looked at him. He was bewitched by her beauty. But he soon got himself together and tried to find a way to touch He Young. He suddenly had an idea. He asked He Young to write a list of the products that were sold in that store in his hand since he was a new employee. He Young agreed to help him. When He Young touched his hand, Jin Wu saw something in his vision. But unfortunately, He Young let go of his hand because she remembered that she had written the list of those products in a small note. 
She then asked Jin Wu to give her his phone and put that note on Jin Wu's phone. After that, she cheered Jin Wu up and left him. Jin Wu was annoyed because of that. He was trying to find another way to touch Yi Young. Suddenly, their boss Shin Young came to that place and asked Yi Young to check the stocks of the cosmetic products in the storeroom. Jin Wu realized that it was the opportunity for him to touch Yi Young. He knew that it was a tiring job and it was better if there was someone else who helped Shin Young to do her job. So he asked Shin Young to allow him to help Yi Young in the storeroom. Jin Wu and Yi Young then went to the storeroom. That storeroom was small and narrow. Yi Young was checking the products in the shelves, meanwhile Jin Wu was writing down the names of the products that she checked. Jin Wu noticed that Hee Young's face got dirty because of the dust from the shelves. He tried to help her to wipe her face, but Hee Young didn't allow him to do that and said that she would clean her face by herself. Jin Wu was annoyed because of that. He didn't know what he should do to touch Hee Young anymore. Hee Young then took a seat in front of Jin Wu to take a rest for a while. Jin Wu wanted to use this opportunity to touch Hee Young. So he asked Hee Young to play a game with him. Hee Young laughed because she thought that it was a game for children. But Jin Wu kept persuading her to do it and Hee Young finally agreed to do it. Jin Wu was waiting for Hee Young to touch him. But unfortunately, Hee Young was so smart and careful with her touch. Then she got up from her seat and asked Jin Wu to continue to work. While Hee Young was checking the shells, Jin Wu saw her legs clearly because she only wore a short skirt. But when Jin Wu was about to touch her legs, Hee Young saw him and asked him about what he was doing. Jin Wu got awkward and embarrassed when Hee Young caught him like that. He quickly made up an excuse by saying that he was just trying to prevent He Young from falling because she was standing on a chair and she was wearing high heels. After Jin Wu completed his shift, he was going home on foot. While he was walking down the street, He Young suddenly showed up and approached him. Even though she was also tired, she encouraged Jin Wu and cheered him up. He Young and Jin Wu then walked down the street together and asked each other about their life. Since Jin Wu was in disguise, he was lying to He Young about his life. He told He Young that he studied business management at university. But he was taking a break from college for a while because he didn't have money to pay his college tuition. He said that his parents were working as farmers in a village, so he couldn't ask them to pay his college tuition. After He Young heard that, she told Jin Wu about her life. She said that she had been an orphan since she was a child. Her life was not always easy, but she was an optimistic person. She believed that her life would turn good for her someday. She told Jin Wu that she just wanted to get married at a young age and have children. But she said that it was impossible for her to realize her dream to get married at a young age now. He Young looked at Jin Wu and fixed his shirt collar. Suddenly, she noticed that there was a man in black suit who was standing in front of a fancy car and looking at her. That man was named Kang Hyun Seo. He Young called Hyun Seo's name and told Jin Wu that she needed to leave now. Then she ran toward Hyun Seo and greeted him. From how Hyun Seo and He Young looked at each other, it seemed that they were a couple. After that, Jin Wu went to Young Dell's coffee shop. He complained to Young Dal about his tiring job at the cosmetic store. He said that it was so hard for him to find the chance to touch Yi Young. He also told Young Dal about everything that he knew about Hee Young, including her good personality and her handsome boyfriend, Hyun Seo. Young Dal was annoyed when he found out that Hee Young already had a boyfriend, but he kept his promise to give his drone to Jin Wu because Jin Wu had done what he asked him. After Young Dal left, Jin Wu suddenly thought about Hee Young. He couldn't stop thinking about how beautiful and kind-hearted Hee Young was after they spent a day together. The next day, Jin Wu went to the cosmetic store to work part-time again. This time, he looked so happy when he was doing his job. But suddenly, he realized that he was smiling like a dumb person and wondered why he did that. He thought that it was not the right time for him to smile like that because he was supposed to hate his job. While he was walking into the store, his boss Shin Young suddenly approached him and asked him if he didn't do anything that evening. Jin Wu asked her if there was something that he needed to do that evening. Shin Young asked him to join her and all employees in that store to hang out together if he didn't have anything to do that evening. She said that they wanted to throw a welcome party for Jin Wu. Jin Wu said that he didn't deserve to have a welcome party because he was only working part-time in that place. But Shin Young still tried to persuade him to attend that party. Suddenly, she touched Jin Wu's hand and Jin Wu accidentally saw into her future. In his vision, Jin Wu saw Shin Young looking horrified and calling He Young's name as if something horrible happened to her. Jin Wu was shocked by what he saw in his vision that he suddenly let go of Shin Young's hand. Shin Young was surprised when he did that. She asked him about what happened. Jin Wu shook his head and said that nothing happened. Shin Young was still confused with Jin Wu's strange behavior. But before she left him, she asked him to attend that welcome party. In the evening, Jin Wu finally decided to attend the welcome party that was held in a karaoke bar. Shin Young and all employees at the cosmetic store were singing some songs together. Meanwhile, Jin Wu and He Young were only sitting on the couch. 
Jin Wu noticed that Ki Young was massaging her leg. Jin Wu was worried when he saw that, he asked her if her leg hurt and Ki Young said yes. Jin Wu thought that Ki Young's leg hurt because she always wore high heels. So he advised her not to wear high heels anymore. Suddenly, Shin Young got off the stage and approached Jin Wu. She asked Jin Wu to sing together with them on the stage because it was a welcome party for him after all. But instead of accepting her invitation, Jin Wu asked them to go home because it was already late at night. But Shin Young ignored him and cheered for him. Other employees who saw that also cheered for Jin Wu and asked him to sing together with them. Suddenly, three men came to that place. Turned out, those men were disturbed by Shin Young and other employees' loud voices. They protested and berated them for making loud noises. The situation in that place became awkward because of that. Jin Wu suddenly remembered about what he saw in his vision when he accidentally saw into Shin Young's future. He was afraid if it was the situation where He Young got injured like what he saw in his vision. Suddenly, he got up from his seat and approached those three men. He and those men soon got into an argument. Those men mocked Jin Wu because he was the only man in that room. Jin Wu mocked them back by calling them stupid. Those men were angry when they heard that. One of them suddenly punched Jin Wu in the face. Shin Young was mad when she saw that. She got up from her seat and yelled at those men. Jin Wu finally woke up from his faint after He Young woke him up. When he woke up, he asked He Young if Shin Young was all right. He Young smiled when she heard that. She showed him that Shin Young and the three men who messed with him earlier were getting along well and singing together on the stage. She said that such thing happened because the employees at their cosmetic store were very friendly. Jin Wu was surprised when he saw that. He then wondered why he saw Shin Young looking horrified as if she witnessed something horrible in his vision. Suddenly, Shin Young looked worried and called He Young's name. But after she did that, she returned to her group and started singing again. Jin Wu was confused when he saw that. He wondered about what happened to Shin Young. He Young laughed when she heard Jin Wu's question. She said that Shin Young always did that when she was drunk. Shin Young didn't mean anything when she called her name like that. Jin Wu felt stupid when he heard that. He finally decided to leave that room to breathe fresh air. He Young said that she would go with him because she needed to breathe fresh air too. He Young and Jin Wu then walked down the street together. He Young asked Jin Wu if his head was all right, and Jin Wu said that there was nothing to worry about his head. He Young then asked Jin Wu if he didn't like alcohol because she didn't see him drinking that evening. Jin Wu said that he cared about his body, so he didn't want to destroy his body by consuming alcohol. He Young complimented him for taking care of his body, even though he was still young. Suddenly, He Young stopped walking and looked surprised when she saw a beautiful swing in that place. She ran toward that swing and played on it. Jin Wu approached her and He Young asked him if he could play on the swing. Jin Wu said that he could even play on the swing while standing on it. To prove what he said, he played on that swing. But before he did that, he asked He Young to play on the swing with him. He said that it was more fun if they played on the swing together. He Young was surprised when she heard that, but she finally agreed to play on the swing with Jin Wu. She climbed on that swing and Jin Wu began to swing. At first, He Young and Jin Wu laughed hard because swinging together was so funny to them. But they soon began to feel awkward because their face and body were so close to each other. He Young didn't even have the courage to look at Jin Wu's eyes. Because of that, He Young suddenly got off the swing and asked Jin Wu to return to the karaoke bar. She said that Shin Young and the others might be looking for them right now. After He Young left that place, Jin Wu was still trying to process his emotion. He realized that his heart was beating fast. He wondered about what was happening to him. The next day, while Jin Wu was working at the cosmetic store, he couldn't stop looking at He Young. He couldn't stop thinking about He Young's beautiful face while she was playing on the swing another day. But he quickly got himself together and asked himself about what was happening to him. Suddenly, He Young massaged her leg again. Jin Wu was worried when he saw that. He then approached He Young and asked her to go to some place with him. Turned out, Jin Wu took He Young to a shoe store. He chose a pair of shoes and told He Young to try those shoes. He Young tried those shoes and those shoes looked good and fitted in her feet. So, without further thinking, Jin Wu purchased those shoes for He Young. He Young was surprised when she heard that. She tried to stop Jin Wu from buying those shoes for her and said that she could buy them by herself. But Jin Wu said that those shoes were the present from him to her. He also asked He Young to wear those shoes when she was working. After that, He Young and Jin Wu returned to the cosmetic store. When they arrived there, they saw Hyun Seo waiting for He Young there. Hyun Seo greeted He Young and asked her to talk to him in private. While Jun Wu was watching him and Seo and He Young from afar, Mei Suk suddenly approached him and asked him to admit that he had a crush on He Young. Jun Wu laughed when he heard that. He said that he didn't have any feeling for He Young. But Mei Suk said that she could see it in Jun Wu's eyes. She said that it was unfortunate for Jun Wu to have a crush on He Young because she already had a boyfriend. 
She said that she was jealous of Hee Young because there was no man who approached her because of her old age. She was afraid that she would die from chronic loneliness because of that. She continued to pour out her heart while touching Jin Woo's cheek. Because there was physical contact between them, Jin Woo could see into her future. Jin Woo told Mai Suk that there was a man who was going to confess his feeling for her in your future. He said that that man was going to do it while singing and dancing. Mai Suk laughed when she heard that. She ignored what Jin Woo said because she thought that he was only joking. She then went inside the store to continue to work. After Jin Woo and Mai Suk finished working at the cosmetics store, they headed out of the department store together. While they were walking down the street, Jin Woo saw Hee Young getting on the bus. He quickly ran toward that bus so that he could get on the same bus. He finally managed to get on the bus and took a seat next to Hee Young. Hee Young was surprised when she saw Jin Woo there. She couldn't believe that Jin Woo rode the same bus because she had never seen him on that bus before. She asked Jin Woo if his head was all right and Jin Woo said that there was nothing to worry about his head. After a while, Hee Young finally began to feel sleepy. She finally fell asleep and leaned her head on Jin Woo's shoulder. Jin Woo suddenly got awkward because of that, he felt his heart beating fast again. Since Hee Young was sleeping, Jin Woo thought that it was the opportunity for him to touch her. He tried to convince himself that it was all right to touch her without permission because he needed to see into her future. He then touched Hee Young's hand and saw into her future. In his vision, he saw Hee Young falling down the stairs from a high place. This time, he saw someone walking toward Hee Young when she was lying unconscious on the floor. He kept mumbling to himself that there was someone else in that place. After that, Jin Woo went to Young Dal's coffee shop and told Young Dal about what he saw in his vision when he saw in Hee Young's future. Young Dal was getting more worried about Hee Young when he heard that. He then asked Jin Woo to return his drone. He said that he would give it back to Jin Woo if he managed to save Hee Young. Jin Woo was annoyed when he heard that. He said that he didn't know where or when that incident would take place. Since Jin Woo didn't have any information about that, Young Dal asked him to keep his eye on Hee Young. He only allowed Jin Wu to return home when he made sure that Hee Young arrived at home safely. The next day as usual, Jin Wu was working part-time at the cosmetics store. He was complaining about his tiring and boring job again. He thought that it was embarrassing for a man to work at cosmetics store and give free samples of the cosmetic products to people who walked past the cosmetics store. Mai Suk berated him for complaining about his job. She said that such job needed to be done by a man because they needed to attract more customers to their store and most of their customers were women. Suddenly, a woman approached Jin Wu and asked him for his opinion about the lip product that was more suitable for her. Jin Wu was confused when he saw that he didn't know what he should say to that woman. Mei Suk then pinched his stomach and Jin Wu told that woman that she would look good in both products. That woman was happy when she heard that she finally decided to buy both products. After that woman left, Mei Suk told Jin Wu that she had just proven what she said. Jin Wu asked her if she knew where He Young was right now. Mei Suk said that Hee Young had left work earlier because she wanted to go on a date with her boyfriend. Suddenly, Shin Young approached Jin Wu and asked him to help her to fix her broken laptop. Jin Wu checked Shin Young's laptop and found out that it was only a random virus. He said that it was easy to get rid of that virus. Suddenly, he had an idea. He asked Shin Young to go outside and buy a cup of coffee. After Shin Young left that room, Jin Wu looked into the file on the table to find Hee Young's address. He finally found what he was looking for and wrote it down on a piece of paper. Hee Young and Hyun Siu were spending some together near Han River. Hyun Siu saw Hee Young getting cold, so he gave his suit jacket to her. While Hee Young and Hyun Siu were walking to their car, Hyun Siu noticed that Hee Young was wearing new sneakers. It seemed that he didn't like it that Hee Young was wearing sneakers. Hyun Siu said that he preferred Hee Young wearing high heels because it made her more pretty. Hee Young and Hyun Siu then went inside their car. In the car, Hyun Siu helped Hee Young to wear her seatbelt. He also touched Hee Young's cheek that looked red because of the cold weather. Hee Young asked him about his work and Hyun Siu said that he almost finished his work there and would move to Shanghai soon. Hee Young asked him if he didn't want to ask something to her. Hyun Siu said that there was nothing that he wanted to ask her. Jin Wu went to the address that he wrote down on the paper and tried to find Hee Young's house. Suddenly, Hyun Siu's car was approaching him. Jin Wu quickly hid behind a wall and saw Hee Young and Hyun Siu getting out of the car. After Hee Young and Hyun Siu got out of the car, Hyun Seo took back his suit jacket and kissed Hee Young on the forehead. Suddenly, Hee Young noticed that there was someone who hid behind the wall. She realized that it was Jin Woo and called his name. The embarrassed Jin Woo then got out of his hiding place and greeted Hee Young and Hyun Seo awkwardly. He apologized to them for interrupting them. Hee Young asked him about what he was doing in that place. Jin Woo said that he went jogging since he lived nearby. Hyun Seo then told Hee Young that he needed to leave now because it was already late at night. Jin Woo and Hee Young watched him leaving with his car. After Hyun Siu left, Hee Young looked sad and headed home.
Jin Woo saw her sad face and asked her why she looked unhappy even though she had just gone on a date. He Young stopped walking and said that she really wanted to go to Namsan Tower. She then sat on the stairs and Jun Woo approached her. When Jun Woo sat next to her, he realized that she smelled like alcohol. He asked her if she had been drinking. He Young didn't answer his question and told him that she had been wanting to go to Namsan Sul Tower since she was a child. She said that she always found Namsan Sul Tower romantic because of its lights and love padlocks. She said that her dream was only to be proposed to in Namsan Sul Tower, get married, and have her own family. But she doubted that she could realize her dream since the man she was dating didn't have any plan to propose to her. She said that she had told Hyun Siu first about it, but he was avoiding the conversation instead. She asked Jin Woo if it would make a woman look pathetic and not special if she kept wanting her man to propose to her. Jin Woo said that Hyun Siu must have his reason why he was doing this to her if he loved her, and that was why he thought that she was pathetic. Jin Woo said that he young deserved to be loved. After that, he young got up from her seat and returned home. While Jin Woo was leaving that place, he saw the man in black clothes who he saw in cosmetic store before. He stopped that man and asked him what he was doing in that place. When that man tried to attack him, Jin Woo held his hand and accidentally saw into his future. In his vision, Jin Woo saw that man attacking a woman. Jin Woo couldn't see that woman's face because that man attacked her from behind. But that woman looked like He Young. Unfortunately, Jin Woo couldn't see the whole vision because that man suddenly punched him in the stomach. Jin Woo fell to the ground because of that. The next day, while Jin Woo was working at the cosmetic store, he couldn't stop looking at He Young. Mei Sook was annoyed when she saw that. She jokingly punched Jin Woo in the stomach and Jin Woo screamed in pain. Mei Sook was surprised with Jin Woo's reaction because she believed that she didn't punch him that hard. She then checked Jin Woo's stomach and got surprised when she saw a bruise there. She asked him if he got into a fight with someone. Jin Woo shook his head and asked her to talk to him in private. In a room, Jin Woo asked Mai Sook if He Young had any enemy. He Young said that she didn't remember that He Young had any enemy because He Young was always being nice to everyone. But she thought that it was possible that He Young was being harassed by her stalkers. After Jin Woo heard that, he thought that the man who punched him in the stomach was He Young's stalker. But Mai Sook didn't believe him because he didn't have any evidence to prove what he said. In the evening, Jin Woo was giving free samples of cosmetic products to people who walked past him in front of the department store. Suddenly, he saw a woman with a white hairpin walking past him. He realized that that woman was the woman whom he saw in his vision earlier. Jin Woo then returned to the cosmetic store and asked Mai Sook about where He Young was right now. A worker there told him that He Young had just left the store to meet someone. Mai Sook said that they didn't have to worry about He Young. She thought that He Young was probably going to reject one of her stalkers. Jin Woo panicked when he heard that. He asked Mai Sook about He Young's current location and headed to that place right away. While he was heading to that place, he called He Young and asked her about where she was right now. Jin Woo turned his head and saw He Young standing on a high place near the stairs. He panicked when he saw that. He quickly told He Young to leave that place immediately. But He Young ignored her because she suddenly received another call on her phone. She answered that call, but she didn't hear anyone. Suddenly, a man in black clothes approached her. He covered her mouth and took her with him. Fortunately, Jin Woo came to that place and attacked that man, but that man attacked him back. Jin Woo and that man then got into a fight. That man punched Jin Woo in the stomach again, right in the spot where he punched him before. Jin Woo screamed in pain and fell to the ground because of that. That man then took out a knife from his pocket. He Young was scared when she saw that. She begged that man not to hurt anyone. During that frightening situation, a police car suddenly approached that place. That man panicked when he heard the police car siren and ran away from that place immediately. Suddenly, Hyun Siu showed up in that place. He asked He Young to stay there and said that he was going to take care of He Young's stalker. He Young was surprised when she saw Hyun Siu there. She asked him what he was doing in that place. Hyun Siu told her to talk about this problem another time because he needed to chase He Young's stalker soon. Jin Woo grunted in pain because of his wound, but he still could berate He Young for trusting a stranger too easily. Instead of responding to him, He Young suddenly sobbed. She said that she was afraid that something bad would happen to Jin Woo. Jin Woo asked her to stop crying and said that he was all right. He then tried to calm her down by taking her into his arms. At the hospital, Hyun Seo and He Young were waiting for Jin Woo in front of the emergency room. Jin Woo was receiving treatment for his wound in the emergency room. Hyun Seo told He Young about how he could arrive in that place on time. He said that Mai Sook told him about her current location, and he went to that place right away. He Young was trying to listen to him, but she couldn't focus on doing that because she kept thinking about Jin Woo. It seemed that she was really worried about Jin Woo. Not long after that, the doctors took Jin Woo out of the emergency room and took him to the recovery room. 
The warrior He Young asked Jin Wu if he was alright and Jin Wu said that how could he be alright in such situation? Jin Wu noticed that He Young's hand was wrapped in bandage and asked her about what happened. He Young quickly hit her hand and told him that it was only a small injury. Suddenly, Han Seo came to that room. He said that he had talked to the doctor and the doctor said that Jin Wu didn't have any serious injury but only had broken ribs. Jin Wu protested when he heard that because how could Han Seo thought that broken ribs were not serious injury? Han Seo smiled and refused to get into an argument with him. He stretched out his arm and asked Jin Wu to shake hands. He also thanked Jin Wu for helping his girlfriend He Young. But Jin Wu said that he couldn't lift his hand. After a while, Jin Wu finally recovered from his illness and got released from the hospital. He went to Young Dao's coffee shop and asked Young Dao to give him some food. Young Dao was surprised when he saw Jin Wu there. He told Jin Wu that he was worried about him, but he couldn't make time to visit him at the hospital because he needed to work at the coffee shop. Jin Wu said that he still needed to continue to work at cosmetic store and watch He Young. Young Dao was confused when he heard that. He asked him if He Young wasn't supposed to be in danger anymore after he saved him from her crazy stalker another day. Jin Wu said that he would be the one who decided when he would stop watching He Young because he was the one who started it. Young Dao found him suspicious and asked him if he began to develop feelings for He Young too. Jin Wu almost choked on his food when he heard that. He said that he had lost his appetite and needed to go to the cosmetic store now. When Jin Wu arrived at the cosmetic store, he saw He Young and other employees heading out of the cosmetic store while bringing some boxes. Jin Wu greeted them and apologized to Xin Young because he had been disappeared from work for days without notifying her. Xin Young said that she had heard everything that happened to Jin Wu from He Young. She then suggested Jin Wu to take a break from work if he was still sick. She said that He Young told her about him like she was telling a story about a superhero. Jin Wu said that he had recovered from his illness now. Xin Young and other employees felt relieved when they heard that. Xin Young then asked Jin Wu to help them to carry some boxes. She said that they would be very busy that day because there was a brand ambassador named Jessica Milo who was going to visit their cosmetic store. After Jin Wu left, Nai Suk asked He Young if there was something between her and Jin Wu. He Young quickly denied that. She said that there was nothing between her and Jin Wu. In a sarcastic voice, Nai Suk said that she had just remembered that He Young was a faithful partner. So it was impossible that she liked another man while she was dating a man. While Mai Sook was walking away from her, He Young suddenly remembered about the time when Jin Wu helped her and calmed her down while she needed help. Later, Jessica Milo finally arrived at the cosmetic store. Shin Young and other employees were amazed by her beauty and appearance. Mai Sook then took He Young with her and approached Jin Wu. Mai Sook asked Jin Wu if Jessica Milo was his type. Jin Wu just said that Jessica was very beautiful and tall, and he said in front of He Young. While He Young was struggling to put a poster on the wall, Jin Wu suddenly came to that place and helped her. He Young got surprised and became awkward because of that. Jin Wu looked at her sneakers and said that he probably had made a mistake by asking her to wear sneakers. He Young said that it was not because of her sneakers. Jin Wu smiled and said that he was only joking. He asked her not to take what he said seriously. While Jin Wu was carrying a box of balloons, he accidentally dropped the box that the balloons fell out of the box and scattered on the floor. Jin Wu and He Young were surprised when they saw that. While they were picking those balloons up, they suddenly touched each other's hands. They looked at each other and became awkward because of that. Suddenly, Shin Young interrupted them and asked one of them to tell Jessica's manager that the event was going to be held soon. Jin Wu said that he would be the one who told Jessica's manager about it. He Young stayed and continued to pick the balloons up. While she was decorating that place with those balloons, she accidentally burst a balloon. Suddenly, she remembered about the time where she spent some time together with Jin Wu. She had no idea why she couldn't stop thinking about Jin Wu. Shin Young came to her room and told everyone there that Jessica had been missing. She was worried about her because her manager didn't even know where she was. Shin Young then asked her employees to find Jessica because the main event was going to be held soon. After Shin Young interrogated Bobby, Jessica's manager, she finally found out that before Jessica went missing, Bobby and Jessica got into an argument about Jessica's birthday. Jessica was mad because Bobby decided to take a job even though she was going to have her birthday the next day. Bobby assumed that it was what made Jessica run away. Mai Sook and other employees then returned to that room. They told Shin Young that they had searched the entire building but they didn't find Jessica anywhere. Bobby was worried when he heard that, he was afraid if something bad happened to Jessica. So he decided to find Jessica by himself. Jin Wu chased Bobby right away. He asked him to allow him to touch his hand. When Jin Wu touched Bobby's hand, he saw into Bobby's future. In his vision, he saw Jessica in a crowded place. There was a statue in that place. Jin Wu recognized that place and asked Bobby to follow him. 
Shin Young panicked because the visitors began to come to that place, but she hadn't heard anything from Jessica. She asked Mai Suk about what to do, she was worried if Jessica wouldn't return to that place. Jin Woo and Bobby came to the place that Jin Woo saw in his vision earlier. When they arrived there, Jin Woo finally saw Jessica in that place. It seemed that she was confused about where she was right now. Bobby called her name and Jessica ran toward him right away. While Bobby and Jessica were hugging each other, Jin Woo interrupted them and said that they needed to return to their event. The meet and greet event finally went on as planned. Jessica's fans were so happy to meet Jessica and so did Jessica. During the event, Mai Suk noticed that Jin Woo couldn't stop looking at Jessica and told Hee Young about it. Hee Young was disappointed when she saw that. She then looked at the high heels that she was wearing right now. After the event ended, Jessica apologized to Shin Young and all employees at the cosmetic store for disappearing before the event began. She also thanked Jin Woo for looking for her. She said that Bobby had told her about everything. She wondered how Jin Woo could find her in that place. She asked Jin Woo if he was a fortune teller. Jin Woo didn't answer her question. Instead, he told Jessica that Bobby had a feeling for her too. He said that he could see it in his eyes. Jin Woo said that just because Jessica couldn't see it, it didn't mean that it wasn't there. Just because Bobby hadn't confessed his feeling for Jessica, it didn't mean that he didn't love her. Jessica smiled when she heard that and kissed Jin Woo's cheek right away. Hyun was surprised when she saw that. Her pupils got larger as Jessica kissed Jin Woo. It meant that she was jealous. After Jessica and Bobby left that place, Shin Young asked all her employees to have a dinner together. While Shin Young and the others were leaving that room, Jin Woo grabbed He Young and told her that there was nothing between him and Jessica. He explained that Jessica was used to do physical contact to show gratitude. He Young was confused when she heard that. She asked Jin Woo why he explained that thing to her. The next day, Mai Suk told He Young that she heard that Jin Woo planned to resign from his job at the cosmetic store. He Young was surprised when she heard that. She went to Shin Young's room to find Jin Woo, but she didn't find Jin Woo there. She then headed out of the department store to find Jin Woo, but she also didn't find him there. Jin Woo went to Young Dao's coffee shop with his old appearance. He didn't look like a nerd anymore. Young Dao asked Jin Woo to help the customers who wanted to use their physic reading, but Jin Woo said that he wanted to stop working as a fortune teller. He said that he wanted to go out to breathe fresh air that evening. Suddenly, a woman came to that place. That woman was the woman who once used Jin Woo's physic reading service. She brought a cake and gave them to Jin Woo to thank him because it turned out that what Jin Woo said about her was true. Jin Woo smiled when he heard that. But he refused to accept that cake and suggested her to give that cake to Young Dao. Since Jin Woo didn't work at the cosmetic store anymore, he Young couldn't stop thinking about him. Suddenly, Jessica and Bobby came to the cosmetic store. Jessica wanted to apologize to Shin Young and all employees there for what she did another day. Jessica then approached Hee Young and asked her to talk to her in private. She asked Hee Young if she had feelings for Jin Woo. Hee Young quickly said that she didn't have a crush on Jin Woo. But Jessica believed that Jin Woo had feelings for Hee Young because she remembered about what Jin Woo said back then. Back then, Jin Woo said that just because Jessica couldn't see it, it didn't mean that it wasn't there. Just because someone hadn't confessed their feeling for someone else, it didn't mean that they didn't love that person. Jessica believed that Jin Woo was telling her about his own life story. After saying that, Jessica left that place. Hee Young didn't know what to say when she heard what Jessica told her. She then took out her phone and tried to call Jin Woo. But before she had the chance to call Jin Woo, she suddenly received a call from Hyun Seo and answered that call. Hyun Seo told her that he couldn't go on a date with Hee Young the next day because he had an important meeting to attend. Hee Young was disappointed when she heard that, but she couldn't be mad at Hyun Seo. She said that she understood and asked Hyun Seo to just focus on his job. The call from Hyun Seo made her realize that she already had a boyfriend and she was not supposed to have feelings for another man. After that, she put the sneakers that Jin Woo gave her into its box. She planned to return those sneakers to Jin Woo. At the coffee shop, Young Dao pretended to be a fortune teller because Jin Woo had decided to stop working as a fortune teller. But unfortunately, his customer knew that he was only pretending and lying to him. She was mad at Young Dao for belittling her. She threw a glass of water at him and left that place. After that woman left, the customer who tried to give a cake to Jin Woo approached Young Dao. It seemed that that customer was not only trying to show her gratitude to Jin Woo by buying him that cake, but also to show him that she had feelings for him. She was sad because Jin Woo refused to accept that cake. Since Jin Woo was not there, that customer used that moment to ask Young Dao about Jin Woo. Young Dao was happy because that customer gave that cake to her. He told that woman about Jin Woo's life story while eating that cake. He suggested her to stop having a crush on Jin Woo because he knew that their relationship would be doomed. He said that Jin Woo couldn't get close with someone because he could see into his partner's future, and that would make him worried. 
That woman ignored Young Dao's suggestion and asked him if Jin Wu hadn't been in any relationship before. After Young Dao fought for a while, he finally told her that Jin Wu had dated several women before, but Jin Wu didn't love those women. While Jin Wu was flying his drone at the park, he couldn't stop thinking about the time that he had spent with He Young. Meanwhile, He Young used her free day to visit Namsan Sewell Tower by herself. She visited the area where couples left their love padlocks there. After He Young left that place, Jin Wu arrived in that place. He visited the area that He Young visited before. That place somehow reminded him of He Young. He looked at the padlock that he carried and kept thinking about He Young. Suddenly, someone approached him and touched him. Jin Wu turned his head and got surprised when he saw He Young there. He Young said that she almost didn't recognize Jin Wu because Jin Wu looked different without his glasses and buttoned up shirt, but she somehow knew that it was Jin Wu. But she still hadn't realized that Jin Wu was the fortune teller that she saw before. He Young and Jin Wu got awkward and asked each other about how they were doing. After having a small talk for a while, He Young finally decided to leave that place, but Jin Wu stopped her right away. He suggested them to spend some time together since they had met each other in a romantic place like Namsan Sewell Tower. He asked He Young to go on a date with him and pretended that they were a couple for only one day. But before He Young had the chance to respond to him, Jin Wu said that he knew that He Young already had a boyfriend, but he still wanted them to go on a date together for fun. He then held He Young's hand and asked her to just give it a try. After that, Jin Wu and He Young finally went on a date as if they were a couple in love. They held each other's hand, flirted with each other, joked around, and laughed together. While they were having a lunch at a convenience store, they cracked their boiled eggs with their heads. They bought cotton candies and tasted each other's cotton candies and did other things that were usually done by a couple. While the sun began to set and the nighttime began to fall, Jin Wu and He Young returned to Namsan Sewell Tower. In that place, Jin Wu took out the padlock that he carried. He showed He Young that he had written her name on it. He Young shook her head and said that only a real couple who was allowed to do such thing. Suddenly, the lights at Namsan Sewell Tower began to come on. He Young was happy and amazed when she saw that. While He Young was looking at the tower, Jin Wu suddenly kissed her. He Young was surprised when Jin Wu did that. Jin Wu realized that what he did was wrong and stopped kissing her right away. The situation between Jin Wu and He Young then became awkward. The embarrassed He Young tried her best to avoid looking into Jin Wu's eyes. Jin Wu apologized to her, but He Young ignored him and asked him to go home. After that, Jin Wu walked He Young home. After a while, they finally arrived at He Young's house. Before He Young went inside her house, she tried to get clarity about what happened earlier. She said that she knew that Jin Wu was a good person and he only kissed her because he got carried away. She hoped that Jin Wu would be a good woman who would love her with all her heart someday. Jin Wu smiled when he heard that. He asked He Young to allow them to see into her future. At first, He Young didn't allow them to do that. But after Jin Wu persuaded her to do it, she finally allowed him to touch her and read into her future. Jin Wu then touched her cheek and began to see into her future. But unfortunately, in his vision, he still saw the horrible fate that happened to He Young. He saw her falling down the stairs and injuring her head. Jin Wu was surprised when he saw that he suddenly opened his eyes and stopped touching He Young. But he didn't say anything about what he saw in his vision to He Young. Instead, he told He Young to go inside her house. He Young then returned home and Jin Wu kept his eye on her until she went inside her house safely. Jin Wu couldn't stop thinking about the accident that he saw in his vision. He wondered why the accident still happened to He Young even though he had saved her from her crazy stalker. To protect He Young from the horrible incident that he saw in his vision, Jin Wu kept following her anywhere. He even followed He Young while He Young and her boyfriend Hyun Seo were going on a date. While Jin Wu was watching He Young and Hyun Seo, he suddenly received a call from Young Dao. Young Dao asked him to go to his coffee shop and return to his old job as a fortune teller, but Jin Wu refused to do that because he needed to watch and save He Young. Jin Wu said that he would protect He Young no matter what happened. After Jin Wu hanged up the call, he kept following He Young and Hyun Seo until they returned home. He even saw He Young and Hyun Seo kissing. He listened to their conversation secretly and found out that He Young began to worry about her relationship with Hyun Seo. But Hyun Seo tried to convince her that there was nothing to worry about by kissing her. Jin Wu couldn't do anything when he saw them kissing. He could only watch them from afar and feel jealous. After He Young went inside her house, the crazy stalker who attacked her and Jin Wu another day suddenly showed up in that place. That man approached Hyun Seo and Hyun Seo gave him an envelope. After that man received that envelope, he left that place right away. Jin Wu followed him immediately because he wanted to make sure if he was the man who attacked him another day. He was surprised when he found out that that man was indeed the one who almost killed him another day. Jin Wu then went to Young Dao's coffee shop and told Young Dao about He Young's crazy stalker. 
Young Dal called his friend and found out that he owns Crazy Stalker had been released from the prison. The police told him that they released that crazy stalker because the victim had withdrawn her statement. Jun Wu was surprised when he heard that. He began to suspect Hyun Seo, who he saw talking to He Young stalker earlier. He asked Young Dal to find some information about Hyun Seo. At the cosmetic store, He Young was thinking about her relationship with Hyun Seo. Suddenly, Mai Suk approached her. He Young asked Mai Suk if she should end her relationship with Hyun Seo or not. Mai Suk said that human feelings always changed. So He Young didn't have to feel guilty if she didn't have the same feelings for Hyun Seo anymore. Mai Suk suggested He Young to take a break and breathe fresh air to calm her mind. Not long after that, Young Dao came to that cosmetic store. He approached Mai Suk and talked to her. After having a small talk for a while, he finally asked Mai Suk to come to his coffee shop and talk to him there. Mai Suk agreed to do that right away. Meanwhile, Jun Wu was still following He Young's stalker. Suddenly, that stalker stopped walking and received another envelope from a man. Jun Wu wondered about the content of the envelope. At a restaurant, Ki Young and Hyun Seo were having a dinner together. But unlike usual, He Young felt a little awkward when she was around Hyun Seo. She couldn't stop thinking about breaking up with Hyun Seo. That was why she didn't feel comfortable when Hyun Seo showered her with care and attention. At the coffee shop, Young Dal and Mai Suk had a drink together. Mai Suk asked Young Dal about what he wanted from her. She knew that everyone wanted something from her when they were being nice to her. Young Dao finally admitted that he wanted to know about He Young's boyfriend, Hyun Seo. Mei Suk was annoyed when she heard that. She thought that Young Dao was trying to get He Young by using her. Young Dao quickly lied to her by saying that He Young was his lover in the past, and that Mei Suk was his type now. Young Dao finally managed to get Mei Suk to tell him about Hyun Seo. Mei Suk told him that Hyun Seo was a successful businessman who had a promising job. She said that Hyun Seo was great at managing his stocks and shares that He Young even trusted him to manage her money. Meanwhile, Jin Wu was still following He Young's crazy stalker. When that stalker was at an internet cafe, he suddenly received a call. After he hanged up that call, he decided to leave that place, and Jin Wu followed him right away. While He Young's crazy stalker was walking down the street and receiving another call from someone, a car suddenly sped up toward him and crashed into him. That man lied unconscious on the ground and got injured because of that. Later, Jin Wu returned to Young Dao's coffee shop and asked Young Dao to find some information about the person who had hurt He Young's stalker. Young Dao then called his friend who was working as a police officer and asked him about that case. After he hanged up the call, he told Jin Wu that the police hadn't found out about the person who was responsible for that car accident. Young Dao also told Jin Wu about what he found out about Hyun Seo. According to Mai Suk, Hyun Seo was a brilliant businessman who was great at managing his stocks and shares. But after Young Dao cross-checked that information with his friends who worked in that field, they didn't know anyone who was named Hyun Seo. Young Dao believed that Hyun Seo was using a fake identity or lying about his job. Jin Wu said that he would find out about everything by himself. The next day, Jin Wu disguised himself as a delivery man and went to Hyun Seo's working place. The worker checked the package that he delivered and refused to accept that package because it was not ordered by anyone there. But Jin Wu kept persuading that worker to accept that package. Suddenly, Hyun Seo came to that place and approached them. Jin Wu asked him to sign the receipt, but Hyun Seo refused to do it. He asked an employee there to sign that receipt instead. After that, Hyun Seo left that place, and Jin Wu followed him right away. Jin Wu saw Hyun Seo having a lunch with a beautiful woman at a restaurant. He saw Hyun Seo and that woman flirting with each other like a couple. When that woman left the restaurant and went inside her car, Jin Wu suddenly stopped her and asked her about her relationship with Hyun Seo. Before that woman answered Jin Wu's question, she took out her phone and took a picture of Jin Wu. She then explained that she was only an employee at an insurance company and Hyun Seo was her VIP client. She also asked Jin Wu if he needed insurance. When that woman touched Jin Wu's neck, Jin Wu accidentally saw into her future. In his vision, Jin Wu saw that woman getting out of the car with a happy face and walking toward a wall in the basement. Jin Wu didn't see what happened after that because he suddenly opened his eyes and avoided that woman. Later, Jin Wu returned to Young Dal's coffee shop and asked Young Dal to find out about the woman whom Hyun Seo met at the restaurant earlier and her real relationship with Hyun Seo. He said that he would go to the cosmetic store where He Young was working at to make sure about something. When Jin Wu arrived at the cosmetic store, he greeted the employees in that place and asked them about He Young. Those employees told him that He Young was taking a break in the staff room. Jin Wu then went to the staff room and found He Young and Hyun Siu there. He Young was surprised when she saw Jin Wu there. Hyun Siu suddenly told He Young that Jin Wu was the person who had been following him all this time. Jin Wu didn't deny that and asked him why he met with He Young's crazy stalker who was supposed to be in jail instead. Hyun Siu said that he met that stalker to give him some money so that he would leave He Young alone. 
He also asked Jun Wu to stay away from He Young and said that he would forget about their problem if he did that. But Jun Wu immediately refused to do that and said that he and He Young had been doing a lot of things together. He believed that He Young had feelings for him too. Hyun Seo was angry when he heard that, he punched Jin Wu in the face right away. Since Hyun Seo did physical contact with Jin Wu, Jin Wu managed to see into his future. In his vision, Jin Wu saw Hyun Seo making love to the woman from the insurance company. When Jin Wu returned to Young Dao's coffee shop, he told Young Dao about everything that he found out about Hyun Seo. Young Dao was angry when he heard that story. He then told Jin Wu about what he found out about the car accident that happened to He Young's crazy stalker. He said that the stalker had died because of that car accident, and he had a life insurance. He found out that the person who had received the money from that stalker's life insurance was Hyun Seo's secret lover. He wondered if it was only a coincidence or had been planned before. Young Dao then remembered about the conversation that he had with Mai Suk. He remembered that Mai Suk told him that He Young trusted Hyun Seo to manage all her money. He was afraid if Hyun Seo was only using He Young, so he could benefit from her life insurance. And that was the reason why he hadn't proposed to her. Jin Wu was surprised when he heard that. He remembered that they could only receive the money from the life insurance if they had used that life insurance for at least one year. Yam Dal said that they needed to find out if He Young had a life insurance or not. After that, Jin Wu returned to the cosmetic store and sneaked into Shin Young's room. He looked through a file there to find out if He Young had a life insurance or not. But while he was taking a picture of that file, Shin Young suddenly came to that place. She was surprised to see Jin Wu there. Hyun and other employees rushed to that room to see what happened. Hyun was surprised when she found out that Jin Woo took a picture of her personal information. She was disappointed at Jin Woo and left that room. Jin Woo chased her right away and tried to explain everything to her. While Jin Woo and Hyun were getting into an argument, Mai Sook suddenly approached them and realized that Jin Woo was the fortune teller whom she and Hyun saw another day. Hyun was getting more disappointed at Jin Woo when she found out about that. She said that Jin Woo was the biggest liar whom she had met in her life. After saying that the angry and disappointed He Young stormed off. Jin Wu didn't know what he should do anymore. He regretted everything that happened to his life. For the first time in his life, he felt sad and heartbroken because of a woman. At the cosmetic store, He Young told Mai Suk that she hated herself because she still had feelings for Jin Wu even though Jin Wu had lied to her. While He Young was pouring out her heart to Mai Suk, a customer suddenly came to that place. Mai Suk approached him and asked him if she could help him. Instead of answering her question, that customer looked at Mai Suk and began to sing and dance for her. Mai Suk was surprised and confused when she saw that. She didn't know who that customer was and why he did that to her. But suddenly, she remembered about what Jin Wu said to her another day. Back then, Jin Wu told her that such thing would happen to her. He Young was surprised when she found out that what Jin Wu said was true and he didn't lie to her. She then left that place and headed to Young Dell's coffee shop to talk to Jin Wu. When Mai Suk arrived at the coffee shop, she straightly approached Jin Wu and said that she believed in him now. After Mai Suk and Jin Wu talked for a while, Mai Suk finally revealed to Jin Wu that He Young had a life insurance and Hyun Siu was the trustee. Jin Wu and Young Dao were surprised when they heard that. It meant that what they thought about Hyun Siu was right. The group went silent for a while because they had no idea about what to do. Suddenly, Mai Suk remembered that He Young received a call from Hyun Siu earlier. She thought that him and Sia was going to propose to He Young that day. Jin Wu was surprised when he heard that. He remembered that in his vision, he saw He Young falling down the stairs and holding a ring in her hand. He believed that the horrible incident would take place on the day when He and Sia proposed to He Young. After the group realized about that, they rushed to the cosmetic store to find He Young, but they didn't find He Young there. They tried to call He Young, but He Young didn't answer their call. Turned out, He Young was busy having a dinner with He and Sia at a restaurant. During the dinner, Hyun drank some glasses of wine, meanwhile Hyun Siu only took a sip of it. Apparently, Hyun Siu had been working together with the woman from the insurance company. They planned to kill Hyun that day, but not by pushing her off the cliff or stabbing her with a knife. They wanted to make Hyun's death look like an accident. They planned to make Hyun get drunk so that she accidentally fell down the stairs when Hyun Siu proposed to her. They thought that a woman who died when she was being proposed to by her boyfriend would be an interesting story. Meanwhile, Jin Wu, Young Dao, and Mai Suk were still trying to find He Young. They went to He Young's house, but they didn't find He Young there. They began to feel hopeless as they didn't know about where to find a He Young anymore. Suddenly, Jin Wu remembered that He Young once told him that she really liked Namsan Sul Tower. Without saying anything to Mai Suk and Young Dao, Jin Wu left them and rushed to some place by himself. Hyun Seo took He Young to a place where they could clearly see Namsan Sul Tower from where they were standing on. He Young was very drunk because she drank too much wine that night. She couldn't even walk properly that Hyun Seo needed to help her. 
When Hyun Seo and Hee Young arrived in that place, Hyun Seo suddenly took out the ring that he brought and proposed to her. He put that ring on Hee Young's finger. Hee Young was surprised when she saw that. She finally decided to tell Hyun Seo about her real feelings for him. She said that she didn't deserve to receive that ring. She quickly removed that ring from her finger and returned it to Hyun Seo. Hyun Seo smirked when he heard that. He finally decided to reveal his true self to Hee Young. He called Hee Young a naive and annoying woman. He told her to keep that ring because it was only a fake ring after all. He mocked her for thinking that he would give a diamond ring for a poor woman like her. He said that the only precious thing that Hee Young had in her life was her own life. Meanwhile, Jun Woo was still trying to find Hee Young by getting around the town of the taxi. After a while, he finally saw Hee Young and Hyun Seo standing near the stairs. He quickly stopped the taxi and running up the stairs to approach Hee Young. But suddenly, he stopped walking when he saw Hyun Seo wearing different shoes. He remembered that it was not like what he saw in his vision. He wondered if he was wrong too this time. Even though Jin Wu had a little doubt, he finally decided to continue to walk and punch Hyun Seo in the face. Hyun Seo and Hee Young were surprised when Jin Wu did that. Jin Wu asked Hee Young to leave that place with him. Hee Young didn't know what to do, but Jin Wu kept trying to convince her to go with him. But suddenly, Jin Wu realized that the legs that he saw in his vision were his own legs. He was worried if the horrible accident that he saw in his vision would happen soon. Suddenly, Hyun Seo got up and pushed Jin Wu's body away. Because of that, Jin Wu's body collided with Hee Young's body, which made Hee Young almost fall down the stairs. But Jin Wu quickly got up and helped Hee Young. Unfortunately, it made him and Hee Young fall down the stairs together. Jin Wu continued to fall down the stairs and injure himself. With that being done, Jin Wu managed to change the future where it was not Hee Young who fell down the stairs and injured herself, but himself. Hee Young was shocked and crying when she saw that. She quickly approached Jin Wu and kept calling Jin Wu's name. A few days later, He Young visited Jin Wu at the hospital. She brought a bouquet of flowers for Jin Wu. She entered Jin Wu's room and laughed when she saw Jin Wu flirting with some old ladies who stayed in the same room as him. After that, He Young asked Jin Wu to go outside and breathe some fresh air. While He Young and Jin Wu were sitting on the bench at the park, He Young showed Jin Wu an article about the arrest of Hyun Seo and his secret lover. He Young said that Hyun Seo would have received 1 million won from her life insurance company if she died that night. Jin Wu responded to what she said by joking around. He asked her to give him something because he had saved her life. He exaggerated his aches and pains. He said that he needed to suffer from severe headache and his hand needed to be wrapped in bandage because of the incident that happened to him that night. He Young mocked him and called him a crybaby because of that. He Young and Jin Wu kept joking around and laughing together. While they were looking at each other, Jin Wu asked He Young if she was going to fall in love with him now. Then he slowly brought his face closer to He Young's face. On that warm sunny day, He Young and Jin Wu closed their eyes and felt their lips gently pressed against each other's.